God's word is your answer. I believe that God is about to show you a pathway today. Whatever problem you're facing, whatever situation that's heavy on your heart, God has your answer and it's always found in his word. I want to talk to you about the importance of your praise. As we worship God, it's not just something that we do on a Sunday morning. It's something that we build a life that denotes his value. And really the truth of it is, is your praise has a purpose. In fact, I found sometimes when I don't know what to do, I praise my way through it. And I'm not the only one. Right here in the Word of God, we see this woman, her name's gonna be Mary, that shows us the importance, how we shift an atmosphere, how we change a situation. And why is shifting an atmosphere important? Because atmospheres are important. What surrounds you matters. Have you ever walked into a room and it's just been so, so tense and so thick and you could feel almost the anger and the heaviness and like, oh, I don't want to be here. Or you've walked into a place and there's such peace, there's such presence, there's such ease. Atmospheres matter. We like to think that we have control over what we do. That's that if we set our mind to accomplishing a task, we can get to where we want to go. But the truth is, our minds are easily swayed by external forces. We get distracted. We, we're moved from uh, situation to situation pretty easily. And like it or not, we are products of our environment. So if you're in a work situation, a home situation, and suddenly a situation comes up that, that seems like a crisis, you're reacting or responding and without an atmosphere of peace, without an atmosphere of wisdom, without an atmosphere of the Holy Spirit, you can respond or react in a way that could take that situation and cause a crisis, cause it to be catastrophic, or you could take it and calm it. Let's get to a place of calm and peace. I want you to say this. I'm about to change this thing. What do you mean? God's word is your answer. Today, I want to show you in the Word how your praise has a purpose. Let's go to Mark chapter 14. We're going to read verse 3 through 9. Maybe it's very familiar. Get out your Bible, your journals, your notebooks, and let's take these notes together. The Bible declares in verse 3, while he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. And some of those that were present were saying indignantly to one another, why was this waste made of this perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money should have been given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you. And you can help them at any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. You might want to read the message version. It just gives you a, a different way of, of seeing it where Jesus says, she pre-anointed my body. She prepared me for the burial. You see, I want to take you through three things today that you find in this very important passage of your praise has a purpose. I want to show you how to change the situation, whatever your situation is, whatever the atmosphere, maybe your marriage is falling apart. Maybe your son or your daughter is rebellious or strung out uh, on drugs, or maybe you go into a work atmosphere and it's just tense and people are plotting against you and undermining you and trying to disqualify you. I don't care what the situation, how, how horrible it is. How difficult it seems to be, I remind you in Jeremiah, is there anything too difficult for your God? There are three aspects that this woman, this Mary shows us to change our thing, to change your thing. I want you to see number one, your moment, number two, your mission, and number three, your ministry. First, let me lay a foundation here because there's a lot of contention among commentators over who this woman is. Some think it's Mary, the sister of Lazarus, and others believe it to be Mary Magdalene. 
Either way, it shows me something vitally important to you and I, that what makes this praise so profound is this is a woman, whether it's Mary, who is the sister of Lazarus, or Mary Magdalene, whichever Mary it is, what makes this woman so great, stand out so much, is she is deeply appreciative and grateful to God for His goodness. Now, I want you to stop right there because gratitude is a feeling of thankfulness and appreciation. It's from the root word, or what we call the etymology, thankful and pleasing, which comes from the word gratis, or where we get the word grace. Grace means God's favor and God's help. It means to be pleasing, to find goodwill, to be agreeable. And it's from the, the pie base, the root word of giver, which means to praise, to welcome, to sing, to announce. So watch what this is. When someone is grateful, it's not just an attitude. The literal meaning of gratitude or grateful is to praise. You can always find the heart of somebody who's walking in grateful and what you appreciate appreciates. So let me show you this. God always said, I'll find a people who will praise me. Now let's reverse that. What God is saying is I will find someone or a people who are grateful for me. It isn't that important. Don't you like to come home and your spouse to be grateful for you? Don't you like when you cook a meal, your, your children, your spouse to be grateful? Don't you like to get the project turned in early on the job and your boss to be grateful for you? You see, when, when, they, when they criticize you, they walk in um, evil speaking. That's what the Bible says to judge someone is literally to criticize them and to have evil speaking. It's a part of gossip and slander. But when you are praising someone, you're walking in gratefulness. Think about that. So gratitude and praise are really inseparable. You really cannot be grateful without praising. Therefore, if you're really grateful for your spouse or your children, you praise them. And that's important because to praise is to acknowledge someone for who they are and what they've done. When I praise God, there's always provision by God's presence. I want you to understand this. I've said it, but what you appreciate, appreciates. You know, God is so adamant about this that He says, if you don't praise me, I will cause the very rocks to cry out. Now, it's not that God is so egotistical that He needs to be built up. It's that all of us at the core of our being want to be appreciated. Do you love me? Do you respect me? Do you honor me? I've always said, look, it's just a little saying that says, in every man, and this is true for women too, there's a king and there's a fool. The one that you speak to is the one that will show up. In other words, what you appreciate, baby, thank you for coming home. Well, he had to come home. No, he didn't. Nobody has to do anything in life. God had to save me. No, he didn't. No one has to do anything in life. Well, he has to feed me and my children. That's no, he doesn't. You see, no one has to do anything. They choose to do it. And when you learn to be a person of gratitude and be grateful, you are a praiser. Praising is not just singing a song that's on the CCM or on the charts or on Christian radio. Praising is a heart that says, thank you. I'm grateful. I love you. I appreciate you. And this is where you build and denote a life of value. How valuable is God to you? How valuable is your pastor to you? How valuable is your spouse to you, your children? So instead of criticizing, you begin to praise. And now this is the point I'm gonna to get to you too. Praise always produces. In Psalm chapter 34, verse one, think about the Psalms. I love reading them. These are great ways to begin to start. And I say, kickstart the praise off. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify, which means like exalt. Come on, swell up. That's what it means like make him really big. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You see, here's the importance of that. God doesn't say, I'll bless the Lord when there's money in the bank. Or the, the word doesn't say that. I'll bless the Lord when my health is just perfect. He says, give thanks in 
at all times. He tells us this in the New Testament. He tells us this in the Old Testament. He doesn't say for all things. There are some things you're not going to always say, I'm so thankful for this horrific day. <laughs> I'm so thankful for this doctor's report of death. No, but in the midst of the doctor's report of death, can you say, God, I trust you. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but God wants you to stop and just say, I love you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. He wants you right now to turn your attention and focus over to Him and really not get a, a practiced praise, but get a real heart praise that says, God, even though this is difficult, even though this is hard, I love you. I trust you. It, it, no matter where I am, if I make my bed in hell, you're with me. No matter what I do, no matter where I go to, no matter what I'm going through, I know you've got me. I'm in the palm of your hand. I exalt you. I will bless the Lord at all times. So let's go back to those two Marys. Was it Mary Magdalene? Was it Mary, the sister of Lazarus? Let, let's look at it. Both Marys had extreme reasons to be grateful. Let's take Mary, the sister of Lazarus. Remember, Lazarus is the one who Jesus raises from the dead. Now here they are at Bethany, and this is where Lazarus lived. And the Bible says that they were at Simon the leper's house. Think details are so important. It's unlawful to eat with a leper. It's absolutely unlawful. Now, perhaps Jesus has healed him. There's so many details that we'll never know. We know that Simon is the cousin of Lazarus. So a leper that Jesus is now eating with, whether he's healed or in an extreme case of grace with a cousin who's been raised from the dead, there's a lot to be grateful for. The Bible goes on to say when they were crucifying Jesus, they wanted to kill Lazarus also. Why? Why is Lazarus such a threat? The fact that God raised him from the dead, Jesus raised him from the dead, shows us humanity, lepers, people that needed to be cleansed by God, people that were full of sin, people that were isolated, people that had no hope, that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that will raise you. It lives on the inside of us. And what that tells me is this. They wanted to get rid of Lazarus because they wanted to destroy any evidence of God's resurrection power. That power doesn't only raise, didn't only raise Christ literally from the dead, but every dead thing in your life can be raised by that resurrection power. Dead dreams, dead marriages, dead uh, whatever, put it in there. God's resurrection power is going to touch you now. Then there's Mary Magdalene. Now, this is interesting because she's mentioned a lot more frequently in the gospel than any other woman beside Mary, Jesus, the mother. Her life, to me, I absolutely love is one of the most transformed by Jesus. So whether it's you're Mary, the sister of Lazarus, who has been raised from the dead, who is at a dinner with either this healed or unhealed leper, any, either way, it's controversial. Are your Mary Magdalene? Why is she so controversial? Because he has delivered her from seven demons that dominated her life. Think about, you think you had problems. I'm not talking about, oh, I'm oppressed. I have a day of depression. I'm talking about complete control from seven demons. And now, because of this divine deliverance, because nothing could set her free, Mary has totally dedicated herself to Jesus and his cause. In fact, she is the largest donor. She contributed so much funding to help Jesus continue his teaching and preaching because she said, look, this is the man who set me free. This is the word that brought life to me. Nothing could help me. The, the voodoo doctors couldn't, the witch doctors, I'm ad-libbing a little bit here, the, the medical doctors, the psychiatrists, none of them, the functional doctors, none of them could get me free. But you know who did? A man by the name of Jesus. So it helped not only Jesus, but also his disciples ministry. She was extremely well off, which tells me you can have means Society can say you're successful because you've got a great career or you've got a lot of money in the bank and, and be full of seven devils. <laughs> you can be so bound. And that was Mary's situation. She was among the first to hear Jesus' resurrection. 
She was among the first to see and speak to the risen Lord. A once demon-possessed woman had a lot to be grateful for. God had set her free. And here's what I want you to know. That your past, no matter how bad it was, no matter what you're dealing with right now, you might think, well, there's no hope. I've, I've gone too far. I'm guilty, Paula. I, I'm really struggling. I have a, an addiction, whatever that addiction is, an addiction to food. I, I'm critical. I'm negative. I'm a gossiper. I'm an adulterer. I'm having an affair. I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. I'm addicted to pornography. Do you think anything, and I could keep on with the list, is too hard for God to set you free? Right now, I declare your freedom in the name of Jesus. According to Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I declare your freedom right now. You can learn a lot from this woman, Mary Magdalene, that whatever it was, seven demons that had her bound, that it's not too much for God to set you free. Be free of fear right now. Be free of torment right now. Be free of sickness right now. Be free of poverty right now. Be free of guilt right now. Be free of shame right now. Be free of addiction right now. Let every bondage that the enemy has tried to break you down with, let it be broken off you right now in the name of Jesus. Here's point number one. It's probably all I'll get to. And your praise has a purpose. I want you to just praise God through this whole thing. Because you're not just going through this routine. Remember, praise is to be grateful. Gratitude sets you in position to receive increased favor, blessing, breakthrough, like so profoundly. Number one, she wasn't going to miss her moment. In other words, you have to be very intentional about this. Little did this woman probably know the significance of her serving. Here we are that we've just read in Mark, that, that she probably had no idea when she's pouring that alabaster box over the body of Jesus that she came and was pre-anointing. She was preparing his body. Nobody knew he was about to die and be resurrected. She probably didn't understand the significance of the value of her worship. You see, she wasn't there to get something from Jesus, but to give him something. Let me ask you, when is the last time you went in and just broke out in worship? Not to get something. Oh, Lord. And think about um, the mother of Andrew, the, one of the disciples. They had heard that, you know, Jesus was, and they thought he was bringing an earthly kingdom, that the kingdom of God was coming, the kingdom of God. So they thought he would overthrow the Roman government and that the kingdom was this earthly kingdom. And uh, there's a lot of teaching there. So they start worshiping him. You know, they're bowing down to him. And they said, by the way, because her husband's gone and her sons have given up everything now to follow this man, Jesus. She's bowing down and said, by the way, who's going to sit on your right hand uh, 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 side of you? In other words, by the way, since my boys have been following you for these last three years, do I get a special seat at the table? She's doing a right thing, but what's the motive there? Is that really worship? So when you truly worship, when you truly serve, because worship is more than singing a song on Sunday, you're not doing it to be seen. You're not doing it to get something back. I don't think this woman walked into this atmosphere thinking, who, she probably didn't even know who all was in the house. I don't think she walked into it thinking, boy, I'm going to get a prophetic word. He's going to say, as long as the earth is, is around, this woman shall be remembered forever, for this will be a memorial as of today. I don't think she knew anything. I think she just wanted to be grateful. And I can see her heart pounding and her taking her alabaster box, which represented her past, her present, and her future. It's equivalent to one year's wage. And she goes to break it because true worship requires brokenness. And just literally pouring herself out and saying, God, I am nothing without you. I am, I can't do anything without you. I desperately need you. And I'm so thankful for the love you've shown me. I'm so thankful for the favor you've shown me. I'm so thankful for the grace you've shown me. You see, true worship is not to get something back. And that gets into a whole nother teaching because as you worship God, he goes, oh, really? That's, oh, magnify the Lord. You make God swell up and he's like a proud daddy. Oh, daughter, you think I did something there? Wait till you see what I'm getting ready to do. He will be worshiped. 
But this isn't, oh, I have to. This is, I get to. So you do it because your heart looks for ways to express and carry out your love for God. That's what this Mary was doing. Remember, none of them thought Jesus was going to be arrested, betrayed, crucified. So I can almost see her go there with me in these last few moments. It was her opportunity, her open door, her moment. Maybe her heart's pounding and it's intimidating. She's like, this is the man that set me free. This is the man that everybody's in awe of. How do I do this? She quickly dresses herself and begins to get ready because she moves determined, I've got a mission to do. You see, people with a heart to worship, a heart to serve, they're always looking for opportunity. How can I do more for God? It's not, hey, will you, would you like to be a partner with Paula White Ministry? It's like, oh my goodness, I get to put 29 million pounds of food out in the last couple of years. You mean I get to send a delegate over to Israel and do this? I get to be a disaster relief in, in Maui and I get to help the underground church in Ukraine and I get to put a van and I get to be a part of this and serve? That's worship. You see, somehow she comprehended, if I miss this moment, I miss out on the miracle. And this is what I want to leave you with. And I'm going to continue this. I've got to make this at least a two-part series. But the first thing I want you to know for your praise to produce is you have to start moving. There's a moment that is waiting on you. Get up, get dressed, go. Go to your prayer closet. Go to that toll-free number right now. Go to the website, just move, because God has a moment. Go fall on your knees right now in front of the Holy of Holies and come into the very presence of God. Don't allow anybody, anything to distract you. That's what this woman had to do. She walks into an atmosphere that the Bible said they're indignant, they're angry about it. You've got to pass through every atmosphere. You've got to get through the fight, get through the battle, get through the distractions, get through the responsibilities and make up your mind that you have a job to do for Jesus. If no one notices you, if no one accepts you, if no one invites you, do it anyway. You see, most of my life, I've always been told, I cannot do it. You should not do it. Don't do it. (laughs) They told me all the reasons that I was not ministry material. But I, I, I heard it, but I didn't listen to it. Many of you know the story. Somebody gave me a a turkey and I took half that turkey and went down and fed the homeless anyway. Today, I stand in awe that God allowed me through a position that he had put me in to literally put 10 billion of dollars when I was the faith director to president for the faith initiative opportunity to put $10 billion into taking care of the less fortunate through farmers to family. Now that was a a full program that God allowed me to serve as a part of. And that that just started me by saying, God, I want to do something because you've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. You blessed me with this turkey. How silly would most people think I am? Very until they see the 29 million pounds of food that we've put in through this community, the $10 billion that God allowed me to help serve this nation with during a crisis time. You see, man may forget so much, but God does not. That moment that you moved is marked forever in heaven. That moment that you worshiped, that moment that you opened your mouth, that moment that you fed the poor and needy, that moment that you partnered with Paula White Ministry, that moment that you worship, because worship is not a, a one trick pony. That says that worship's not just one lane. It's all of it. It's to serve, it's to honor, it's to respect, it's to reverence, it's to show God in the earth through your life. What I want you to do is start moving. Move. Do something different this week. Buy somebody a coffee. Take somebody out and just be a listening ear. Pray over someone you haven't prayed over. Pick up a broom at your church, but you might be the CEO of it. No, pick up the broom. Show that there is not anything that is beneath you. Give somebody a turkey. Make a difference. Don't miss your moment. I believe that God's about to do something so great for you. And I want you to Just be a partner with us at Paula White Ministry. I believe that as you partner up with us and say, Paula, I want to make a difference. I've 
said some of the things we're doing. You can go to the website, get all the information, but I'm gonna ask you to pray and to ask God, what can I do to be a blessing? What can I do to make a real difference? I want you to call that toll-free number. I want you to go to the website. I want you to give however you feel led to give, but give graciously, give generously. And if you have a prayer request, Don't just sit there and do this by yourself. Maybe you are very sick. Maybe you're hurting. Maybe your marriage is falling apart. Send us your prayer request. I'm gonna stand in agreement with you and pray. Father, right now, I pray over my dear friend that they would recognize how much you love them, that you would wrap your arms of love around them and hold them so tight. Devil, take your hands off. Let every demonic force Let every demonic spirit that is coming against their mind, their purpose, their body, their relationships, let it be broken off by the superior blood of Jesus Christ. You said in your word that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I declare freedom over you. I declare peace over you. I declare restoration over you. I declare God's fullness of salvation over you in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hebrews 13.8 Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. Luke 6.38 If God is speaking to you to be a blessing and sow a generous ministry gift into the fertile soil of Paula White Ministries, call the toll-free number, go to the website, write the P.O. Box, or simply text PWM to the number 45777 right now from your smartphone. Your generous support will help millions of people through this ministry, including reaching the world with the priceless gift of the gospel of Jesus Christ, transforming lives, healing hearts, and winning souls every day through this television program and the live preaching ministry of Paula White Kane and Jonathan Kane. Our feeding outreaches, providing food, clothing, household furniture, and goods to those in need in the local community and around the nation. Our emergency relief efforts, providing quick response assistance with food and relief supplies to victims of natural disasters like Puerto Rico and war-torn areas like Ukraine. With other ministries around the nation and the world, going into prisons, ministering in the streets, and making a difference in communities. Thank you, and God bless you. Prayer changes things, and we want to pray for you today. Go to PaulaWhite.org slash prayer right now and send us your prayer request. One of our intercessors will receive it and immediately begin praying for you, declaring God's word over your life for your needs.